Hello everyone, this is John, and welcome back to Crusader Kings 2. Uh, in this episode, we'll begin to actually start to play the game. Theoretically, if there aren't too many menus to explain. Um, okay, so what do you do in Crusader Kings 2? Uh, the notional object of the game is to ensure that your family, your dynasty, survives until the end date of uh, 1453. Um, there are a lot of things that can kill you, people who want your land and whatnot. Um, so that's kind of a tough goal, especially if you're starting off as small as we are. Um, the other notional goal in that game is to increase your dynasty's prestige. Um, that's represented by a score. Uh, it's, the score's right here in the upper right. Uh, we have a score of zero because we haven't done anything yet. Uh, your score is equal to the sum total of the accumulated uh, prestige and piety that your rulers get. Uh, whenever your ruler dies, uh, their prestige and piety are added to your family's score. Uh, so, right now, our prestige is 40 and our piety is 20. Um, those can be found right up here in the top right. And uh, there are a lot of factors that go into how you gain these things. Uh, prestige is usually gained by how many titles you hold and how many vassals you have. Uh, looks like you get slightly more prestige for holding a, a title than you do for having a vassal title, but you can have a lot more vassals than you can titles. Alright, uh, so that is the other notional goal, but in reality what you want is to set goals for yourself, short-term goals. Um, and usually these short-term goals will also help you with your long-term goal of surviving. Um, I suppose in theory you could set a goal to self-destruct as quickly as possible, um, but I'm not sure how satisfying that would be to play. Okay, so uh, our goal right now, and probably the most basic and simple goal, is expansion. We want to expand our realm so that we have uh, enough space that we don't have to worry about getting wiped out through a sudden treachery. Uh, so, the main way to expand is through war. Uh, you can also expand peacefully through manipulating inheritance laws, uh, but that's really a crapshoot. Um, war is at least certain. However, uh, you can't just declare war on somebody because you want their stuff. Uh, you've got to have a good reason uh, to declare a war, uh, what's known as a casus belli, which is, you know, a cause for war. Uh, you can't just declare war on anyone, which uh, seems like uh, a concession made to gameplay, because it doesn't... I wouldn't be surprised if uh, a medieval nobleman just said, uh, your land looks nice, I want it, and there's nothing you can do about it. Uh, but uh, according to the lore of Crusader Kings, at least, um, noblemen do not declare war unless they have uh, a claim on the land. Uh, of course, those claims can be fabricated, uh, but at least everyone respects a certain legal code. Um, so let's go into the details of how you declare war. Um, to declare war, uh, first thing you got to do is find the leader of a rival kingdom. Uh, you cannot declare war directly on vassals. You've got to go to the highest rank of authority. And to do that, uh, you look in your opponent's realm for the fanciest of these little shields. Uh, those are the one, uh, counties personally held by uh, the king of the realm. So let's go up to uh, Aquintine here and see this fancy shield with the lion on it. That is the royal county, uh, La Marche. Uh, and when you click on the county, it brings up this county screen. Um, counties have different holdings. Uh, baron, uh, these holdings are cities, uh, bishoprics, and castles. Uh, lesser nobles hold these, generally. Um, the higher nobles hold the capital, the county capital. The lesser holding nobles hold the... Uh, the subordinate holdings, uh, what are known as baronies. However, um, 
you can hold baronies yourself if you need to. So when you click on the county, it brings up this screen and also uh, the portrait of the ruler of this uh, county. So King Louis the Stammerer. You click Stammerer. Uh, you click on the portrait and it brings up the character screen for the character and then you can click on Conduct Diplomacy. Uh, See, so Declare War. We cannot declare war on King Louis uh, because we do not have a casus belli. Other things that would stop you from declaring war, um, if you're betrothed to the, to the close relatives, if they hold one of your close relatives hostage, if you're bankrupt. Uh, you also cannot declare war if you're already at war with somebody. Um, this can be inconvenient at times uh, because sometimes you want more than one county uh, at a time. Uh, but even if you have multiple casus belli, you've got to choose one and stick with it. So let's click on someone who we can declare war on. This guy. Um, Kutu uh, ooh, I can't pronounce that. Kuturab. All right, and then click one. Click on Diplomacy, Declare War, and uh, as you can see, we do have uh, Casus Belli for this guy. Holy Wars. Um, a Holy War will target a whole duchy at a time. Uh, so uh, it allows you to, a, uh, to claim a lot of territory really quickly, uh, but the downside is nearby rulers of the same faith might join in and help them out. Uh, we're not actually de going to declare war on the Umayyad Sultanate at this time uh, because uh, they're po too powerful. Uh, how do I know they're too powerful? Well, let's take a look at another menu, which I'm sure everyone was dying to see. Uh, all right, here's the military menu. And the military menu shows your current military strength. Um, it's divided between your domain troops, which we have 658, your vassal troops, 270. So we have about 900 troops at our disposal. Uh, the number of vassal troops you get, that depends on your vassal's opinion of you. The higher the opinion, the greater the percentage of troops you get from that one. Um, so let's see, if you hover over the troop bar, you can see that Duke Anzar could provide us with at most 246 troops, uh, but he's only going to give us 110 because he doesn't like us that much. Um, the Bishop of Lair likes us a bit more, but he has fewer troops at his disposal. Um, so our situation is not great, military-wise. Now if you want to check the military strength of a foreign realm, go and you find the ruler again, and click on this button here in the character screen which we didn't explore before, the realm tree. The realm tree brings up uh, this screen here, and if you click on the expand button, you can see uh, the ruler and his direct vassals here. Uh, you got to right click to, to move this. Uh, he has a lot of vassals. Then if you click on the expand for one of the vassals, uh, you can see that vassals vassals. So this guy's got a few, and then you can click on that to see the vassals vassals vassal. Uh, you're not going to generally find more than three or four layers. Um, I think the maximum would be uh, emperor to king, king to duke, duke to count, and count uh, to uh, to baron, so five layers total. Um, so you can see that he is not someone to be trifled with. Then if you hover over their, uh, uh, this little percentage thing here, uh, you can see their current strength. He's got 4,000 troops at his disposal. That's just him. His vassals have more. Um, and uh, that means that if we declared war and none of his people uh, volunteered extra troops, uh, that we would still be outnumbered four to one. So declaring war on Sultan Muhammad is not something that we want to do. Um, the other main source of Casus Belli is uh, du jour claims. So let's take a look at some extra map modes. Uh, du jour duchy, du jour kingdoms, and du jour empires. Basically, a du jour territory is one that is traditionally associated with a particular title. Um, th and this is du jour, it means that uh, the particular counties can be held by other people, uh, but uh, culturally 
they have a, they're associated with each other even if formally by law they're not sort of like how in America uh, New England is you know a recognizable region but there's no legal definition uh, to behind it so let's take a look at du jour duchies um, and this brings up the screen each of the duchies is got a different color. If we scroll out a little, we can see the names of the duchies. Uh, and as you can see, the Duchy of Navarra is divided uh, between three different kingdoms here. Um, it's got three counties, uh, Navarra, Vizcaya, and Najera. And Vizcaya is currently held by Asturias. And uh, Najera is currently held by uh, the Umayyad Sultanate means that we could declare war on either of these people for this county or that county, but we wouldn't have much chance of winning either one. Um, we also have de jure cl ducal claims in uh, Aragon uh, because our vassal is the Duke of Aragon, so we can go to war on his behalf to reclaim these. Um, probably don't want to because his duchy is a lot bigger than ours, so he would become too powerful if we went to war on his behalf. We also see de jure kingdoms. Um, scroll out a bit, and Navarra is just these three counties. Uh, Aragon is a significantly larger kingdom, uh, which kind of sucks for us because we're the king of Navarra, which means that uh, we've also got uh, de jure king claims on these three territories, but it doesn't really help us strategically much. Um, the Duchy of Navarra and the Kingdom of Navarra exactly the same size, um, which means the king title is mostly a prestige thing. Aragon, however, controls, uh, you know, what looks like three duchies. Oh, wait, no, maybe four. Um, oh, no, three duchies. Uh, Valencia, Barcelona, and Aragon, which means that if we ever became the king of Aragon, we could press claims on uh, these counties here on the south coast, even if we didn't have their duke, uh, duke titles. Uh, but to, to, to become king of Aragon, we've got to control most of the territory of that kingdom. There's also another level of de jure uh, claims, and that is de jure empire. See, all of Iberia here is the empire of Hispania. So if we declared, if we conquered enough of Hispania uh, to create the empire title, we could also create, uh, have basically casus belli on any holdout territories uh, to uh, conquer them and incorporate them into our realm. But that is a long time off if it happens at all. So uh, these de jure territories give us a fairly good idea of what our goal should be in the short term, which is we should try and become the king of Aragon so that we have a nice, decent area to expand into. Um, however, to do that, we'll still need to declare war at some point. However, we're hopelessly outmatched. That can be rectified, however. <laughs> Said however three times there. Okay, so let's click back on uh, King Louis here. I noticed something about him when I was trying to declare war on him earlier. He has no wife. Let's see if we have relatives uh, that are unmarried. Uh, oldest son is married, which of course we can't do, do a gay marriage in this game, so I don't know why I uh, bothered with that. Let's take a look at her daughters. Uh, Princess Oneka is married, and Princess Jimena is not. So, let's click back on LaMarche and go into the diplomacy screen. Uh, we can arrange a marriage between our lines. Um, uh, to, when you bring up the Arrange Marriage uh, button here, uh, you see these empty portraits. You can click on the empty portrait and arrange a marriage between anyone in King Louis's court. We want King Louis himself. And then we can click on this portrait to arrange a marriage with any female in our court. We could marry him to our half-sister, but he's not... Oh, well, actually he will, would accept that. Um, he doesn't like the difference in age, but the political concerns are so strong that uh, he's willing to overlook that. However, we don't want to marry him to our half-sister. We want to marry him to our daughter 
so that the alliance will last longer. All right, so we send this off. And then uh, we can also look around and see if any of these other nearby kingdoms have eligible bachelors or bachelorettes, uh, because we do have a half-sister to get rid of. Ah, see, he's not married. Let's see, arrange marriage. Um, we already have an alliance between him and us because our king is married to his daughter, uh, but, uh, oh, see, he is not willing to marry uh, Princess Numlia, Numila because she is past childbearing age, and uh, there would be no new alliance between us. So let's take a look, see if we can find uh, eligible uh, bachelorettes for our unmarried son. Ah, King Charles. Um, he has some daughters. Uh, Ermintrude here is 17, so she's probably not married. The older the characters get, the more likely they're, they are to be married. And we can arrange a marriage. Uh, since she's a vassal, clicking on her arranged marriage uh, does not give us the option to switch. And then we click on someone in our court, uh, and on so our son, the Marshal of Navarra, is uh, is an eligible bachelor, so we can arrange that marriage. Uh, now this is good because once these marriages go through, uh, we will be allied with the three largest nearby Christian kingdoms, West Francia, uh, Francia, Aquitaine, and Asturias, which means that even though Umayyad are powerful and to our south, um, we have a certain defense against them. Uh, just like we could declare war, holy war on them, they can declare holy war on us. So they are a major threat. Uh, these other kingdoms are not because they don't have valid casus belli at the moment. Uh, so these guys are going to be our enemy. Um, what we want is to declare a holy war for, um, for Aragon and get it. However, uh, if you look at the realm trees of our allies, uh, you can see that his total uh, troop levy is 2,600, um, and then his total troop levy is 681, and his total troop levy is uh, 1,500. So even though all three of us together could probably win against uh, uh, Umayyads, uh, it's, it'll be a close thing, so we don't want to necessarily jump into it. Um, we'll get to what my plan is in the next episode, and maybe next time we'll actually start time as well. Uh, until then, uh, you have a nice day.